Professor Clements with you as we uh, consider uh, topics in Section 7 of Chapter 27 of OpenStax College Physics, Thin Film Interference, Constructive and Destructive Interference uh, Caused by uh, Light Reflecting from the Top and Bottom of a Thin Film. So we have white light, all colors here, coming down onto glycerin. We have an index of refraction given for glycerin. And then we have uh, flint glass underneath that with its index of refraction given. We have a person with their eye up here looking down at the reflected light that's coming back up from the top of the glycerin and from the bottom of the glycerin reflection. And uh, we, the person can't see any light at 600 nanometers. Uh, of course, they have some instrument that's uh, telling them there's no energy at uh, wavelength of 600 nanometers. So we want to calculate the thickness of the glycerin. We want to calculate how thick is this thin film such that we end up with destructive interference for the uh, wavelength of 600 nanometers. So we're getting destructive interference. For these thin films, we have to consider phase shift at reflection. We have to consider the phase shift at uh, the reflection. So air has index refraction 1.0, the glycerin 1.473, the flint glass 1.66. Our rule is if we're bouncing off of material that has higher index refraction, then yes, there is a half wavelength phase shift. So half wavelength phase shift at this first reflection for beam number one. And also here, we're in 1.473 coming into the boundary. We reflect off a of medium 1.66 index refraction. Yes, there's one half wavelength phase shift at this uh, boundary. Both reflections involve a half wavelength phase shift. That is not going to be the cause of the two beams being out of phase. Instead, the two beams are out of phase beam one and two out of phase by half a wavelength due to the total path in the glycerin. So we have the wave continuing on down here. We have extra path traveled on beam two that is going to shift us half a wavelength. <coughs> well, there's a little complication. In the glycerin, we don't have 600 nanometers. We have a wavelength in the glycerin that we're going to have to calculate. We know that uh, you know, the speed of the wave is wavelength times frequency. In a vacuum, we would use C, the speed of light. But we're in the glycerin. So I'm going to call this lambda prime. How would I come up with this number? Well, I'd have C equals lambda times F. In the glycerin, we're traveling slower by a factor of N, the index of refraction. And that causes the wavelength to be smaller by a factor of N. The frequency is constant whether we're in air, glycerin, or flint, frequency is a constant. So we have a smaller velocity. Um, we have a smaller wavelength inside the glycerin. And that smaller wavelength is calculated. This lambda prime inside the glycerin is equal then to the wavelength in air divided by the index of refraction of the glycerin. So I came up with uh, 407.3 nanometers. That's the wavelength in the glycerin. So the wave is traveling through here. We need the wave to travel one half of this wavelength in the glycerin for its total path. So we have the, uh, the new wavelength here. The total path has to be half of 
the new wavelength. Let's examine this. What would happen if I'd have one quarter of this lambda prime going down towards the reflection? So coming down to, to this boundary. And I have one quarter of lambda prime going back up. So on the side over here, going back up to the air. One quarter plus one quarter, that's a half. That's what we need. We need the wave to have a total path in the glycerin of half of its wavelength so that we'll have a peak change to a valley or a valley change to a peak. We'll have a mismatch with the peaks and valleys for beam number one. So that's what we need. We need a thickness of one quarter wavelength. We've got the same thickness back up. So the thickness is one quarter of our wavelength in the glycerin. And rounding this off just a little bit, uh, 102 nanometers. That's the thickness, our minimum thickness of this glycerin. We're not going to do cases where there's one and a half uh, total path in the glycerin or two and a half. We're just going to do the minimum case one half. Um, so that's our thickness. So question two, are there any colors that appear bright, constructive interference uh, to the person? Well, let's consider this. So, to be bright, what's the total path that we need? We can see here that we have half wavelength phase shift at both reflections. In order to stay in phase, we're going to need to have one full wavelength or two full wavelengths or three full wavelengths in here. Let's do the calculation for one full wavelength for the path going down and, and coming back up. So this one full wavelength uh, lambda prime uh, going down and coming back up. Here's our thickness. So if what going down and coming back up is uh, the wavelength, the wavelength would be twice the thickness. I'm rounding off just a little bit here, but 204 nanometers would be our uh, lambda prime. That's the wavelength in the glycerin. What's the wavelength in the air? Well, lambda prime is lambda over n. So if I want to calculate the wavelength in the air, I need to take the index of refraction times lambda prime. Or index of refraction, 1.473 for our glycerin. And my paper slid down a little bit here. Uh, so let's repeat this a little bit. Um, in order to get constructive interference, I need one full wavelength of travel in the glycerin. That's the lambda prime. Double the thickness is 204 nanometers. To calculate the wavelength in air, it's index refraction times the wavelength in the glycerin. And multiplying those out, I have uh, 300 nanometers. That is not in the visible. That's in the ultraviolet range of wavelengths. And there won't be any visible color that would be truly uh, constructive interference. There'll be partially constructive interference, but not, not total constructive interference down at the blue end, uh, 400 nanometers. If I go to some other uh, wavelength, if I have a, a total path of two uh, wavelengths in the glycerin, that just makes my wavelength smaller. It turns out to be 150 nanometers in air. And again, we're in the ultraviolet. So no, there's no color that's going to be especially bright. We're going to have a missing color of 600 nanometers because of the destructive interference set up by the combination of how did the light bounce with phase shift and what's the total path in the, uh, in the thin film. So stay tuned for another video on this and uh, ask your instructor some questions.